In the entire canon of combat-centric action games, one name stands above all the rest. Sorry Capcom, sorry From Software, but the best developer of high-octane bad guy smashing beat-em-ups is without a doubt Platinum Games. From Bayonetta to Metal Gear Rising to The Wonderful 101 to Nier Automata and a bunch of others besides, Platinum have become known for seamlessly blending cinematic, stylish action with complex and rewarding combat mechanics that feel just as good to fully master as they do to use for the first time. Whenever I revisit a Platinum game, I always end up finding out new tricks, or discovering a new detail about the combat system, or just figuring out a new way to push my skills past what I thought were their limits. In short, Platinum are the masters of making games that have depth. But what is depth? Well. Unlike a lot of other game design concepts, depth means exactly what you think it does. Deep games are games with a lot of layers, and a lot of potential scope for different ways to interact with their mechanics. Truly deep games allow players to unlock new strategies and complexities from within the same set of mechanics they've been using the whole time. Check out my sorry excuse for Bayonetta gameplay compared with a real master of the craft like General Beatrix, who's a speedrunner. We've got exactly the same stats and moves at our disposal, we're just using them on completely different levels. Think of depth like an ocean of gameplay knowledge that you start off only seeing the surface of, but that reveals more and more nuances the further down you descend. All the best competitive esports titles are usually very deep for exactly this reason. Only games that can support a wide variety of competitive strategies, and offer the greatest possible tests of knowledge and mastery, will be able to keep the kinds of psychopaths capable of only playing a single game for a thousand hours occupied. But there's a million deep games I could be talking about. There's fighting games, strategy games, Dota style stuff, and shooters. What makes Platinum special? Why am I singling their approach to depth out? Well, I think that we've got a lot to learn from the way that Platinum can make insanely complex games that take years to truly master, but still be able to accommodate less skilled players and give them just as much of a good time as the people on their millionth playthrough. By changing how we view depth, complexity and mastery, and by following Platinum's example, we can help to make games more inclusive for newer people, whilst also making that depth more satisfying to plunge into. I've played Metal Gear Rising Revengeance a grand total of three times, and every single time that I've gone back to it, I've managed to discover new cool things about how the game works, or about the best ways to handle Raiden the Twinkie Ninja Cyber Emo. My first trip through the game saw me getting completely bodied by even basic enemies, and barely even using stuff like parries or blade mode, except when I was required to, making the whole game an almost Dark Soulsian struggle for survival against the odds, but with way more triumphant metal music. Second time around, I got my teeth stuck in, and spent my time really mastering all those mechanics that I'd ignored the first time around, and it was great to see just how much combat potential I'd been missing with blade time. Cutting people's limbs off and watching them hop around is so much better when they gave you real trouble your first time fighting them. And in my most recent playthrough, the experience was almost… zen. Nothing really posed a threat to me anymore, and so I whirled through each level like a cold, calculating tornado of death, using my accumulated knowledge to push for those elusive S ranks. So how did Platinum manage to pull this off? How did they give me three different but fundamentally linked experiences within the limits of a single game? Well, it all comes down to how they think about depth, as well as the fact that the people over at Platinum… sort of design games… backwards. Where most studios spend the opening months of a new project hashing out raw mechanics to get them feeling just right, Platinum start out with the big picture abstract stuff. Their first job is to settle on a particular fantasy, setting or vibe that's then going to inform the rest of the game. For example, Transformers Devastation engages with the childlike fantasy of smashing action figures together, and The Wonderful 101 is all about feeling like you're a part of a superhero team. At Sushi Inaba, head producer at Platinum, says that a pro designer should be able to come up with at least three unique selling points that reflect this theme, and it's only once these ideas are in place that work on the mechanics, characters and everything else can actually begin. One example of these unique selling points is the ability of the main character of Vanquish, who's a douchey cool guy, to casually flick his cigarettes around to distract the thermal vision of bad guy robots. It's… it's pretty awesome. Contrary to what you might expect, the core mechanics in any of Platinum's games, from Mad World to Vanquish, are usually very simple. You'll almost always have a light melee option, a heavy melee option, a ranged attack, a dodge, a jump, some sort of super ability, and that's about it. Doesn't sound like a lot, right? Well, that's because these mechanics are designed in such a way 
that their depth and challenge comes not from complexity, but from emergent factors, meaning that they're really easy to get to grips with, but still have very deep gameplay for experts to enjoy. Novice players will begin their time with a Platinum game by engaging with the combat mechanics of face value, and not really putting much thought into their advanced applications. That means it's important for Platinum to make combat accessible, and to ensure it still engages with those thematic ideas, even when players are working on a very basic level. Adding enough combos so that players will randomly activate them by button mashing, or sprinkling in scripted segments where even underperforming players get to feel powerful, helps to internalise the themes and tone of a game during those crucial first few levels. Platinum's games nearly always start off with an incredibly easy but bombastic opening sequence to teach you how to play and ingrain the core thematic idea for exactly this reason. This fella in Metal Gear Rising is literally two minutes into the game, and it's brilliant. As a player gets better and better at the game, they won't unlock much in the way of new moves or abilities, they'll just be able to use what they have more effectively. By chaining different basic techniques together, and discovering some of their fun emergent properties, players can slowly but surely develop an expanding repertoire of highly technical skills, like combos, counters, and ways to manipulate the enemy AI. High level play allows players to begin engaging with those unique selling points I mentioned earlier. Let's take Transformers as an example. As previously outlined, the core fantasy of that game is all about the fun of fighting as a big, chunky robot who can transform into a car, and then hit people like a truck. New players get this feeling in the cutscenes and scripted segments, but advanced players who've seen that stuff before can still engage with it through play. Skilled Transformers Devastation players won't spend their whole time in robot form or vehicle form, they'll rapidly switch between the two to chain together combos and rack up loads of damage. Hitting the transform button at the end of a string of moves immediately turns you into a car and sends you flying at the nearest enemy, charging at enemies in vehicle form can shatter shields, opening bad guys up for a beatdown in robot mode, and vehicle form shrinks your hitbox, meaning that it's great for avoiding barrages of range fire or taking down fast moving enemies. Your first playthrough of a Platinum game is a complete and satisfying experience, but you spend it watching and trying to emulate the cool character you see on screen. It's not until your subsequent playthroughs that you actually get to become them. This is what Hideki Kamiya, director of The Wonderful 101, as well as other stylish but deep games like Okami, Resident Evil 2 and Devil May Cry means, when he says that the first playthrough is something like a tutorial and that the real game begins the second time through. While Platinum do design all their games to be perfectly fun playthrough just once, they're also designed to be replayable, with returning players focusing less on getting through the story and more on getting a high score by pushing their skills to the limit. Each game's scoring system is tailored to push players into acting a particular way and fully immersing themselves in that game's core theme. Bayonetta's scoring system heavily emphasises long strings of combos and taking no damage, encouraging heavy use of witch time and mastery of advanced techniques like dodge offsetting, where well-timed dodges and gunfire can allow you to delay combos until you're in the perfect position to strike. Vanquish heavily prioritises speed, incentivising aggressive use of the bum rocket to flank enemies and get through the level faster, with minimal cowering behind walls. Metal Gear Rising's score system, interestingly, is very forgiving when it comes to players taking damage, as one of Raiden's core abilities lets him cut open enemies to heal, requiring precision strikes to pull off reliably. This, combined with other uses of blade time, like chopping missiles out of the air and cutting armour to bits, lets you feel like a highly trained ninja, barely keeping a brutal killer at bay. Which is like, Raiden's whole deal. Like I said, he's… he's really emo. To recap, Platinum's combination of deep, flexible mechanics, modulated by a distinctive style, allows them to create games that let players of different skill levels engage with the mechanics in a way that's right for them, but still find common ground in the high concept themes. Now, as great as their stuff is, Platinum do make a relatively specific style of game. Even when they do branch out into third-person shooters or RPGs, the focus is still on their trademark deep but fair combat. So, what lessons from Platinum's approach to depth can we take and apply to our understanding of other genres? Well, I think there's three. First is the idea that simplistic, versatile systems can often be more strategically engaging than very complex ones. This is because a few versatile moves offer players much more scope for exploration and self-expression thanks to their emergent properties. More complicated systems, on the other hand, are usually more rigid, and figuring out the best move to use is more a matter of computation than discovery, and once you've got all that figured out, they're usually easy to optimise. Take a mechanically dense shield like Borderlands, which has 70 trillion guns on offer, and compare it to a much more straightforward one like Dusk, which has a grand total of 9. Because Borderlands has so many variables like elemental damage, level requirements, character skills, randomised stats and so forth, 
Finding the right gun for the job is usually very easy, and just amounts to finding the one with the highest numbers that doesn't have a crippling downside. Compare that with Dusk's much more spartan selection, which uses the idiosyncrasies between guns to make your choice of weapon very impactful. For example, the crossbow has a piercing shot good for sick multi-kills, but the mortar's explosion is more reliable, at the potential price of catching yourself in the AoE. The choice between the regular shotguns and super shotgun is interesting too. One is slow and incredibly powerful, whilst the others are faster and have a tighter spread, but they both draw from the same ammo pool, meaning you've got to watch how hard you commit to each weapon in case you get caught with your pants down later on. Simple mechanics often lead to more strategic choices because you're forced to be creative and slowly master what you have rather than just working out what the best possible option is. The second takeaway from this look at depth is that by building games around a particular theme or idea, rather than a mechanic, we can allow gamers of all skill levels to engage with the same experience. Platinum have shown that this idea can work for a variety of single player games, from the melodramatic Nira Tomato to the campy, light-hearted fun of the wonderful 404, but this approach can work for multiplayer games too, such as in the elegantly designed competitive games Rocket League and Spy Party. The main appeal of Rocket League is getting to experience the highs and lows of playing football, but with everything cranked up to 11. To this effect, Doing cool things like explosive tackles or diving across the goal to save a shot are very easy to perform, are useful strategies, and both make heavy use of the game's fantastically designed boost mechanic. Just like in a Platinum game, the more you get to grips with the slightly weird way Rocket League's gravity works, you'll be able to transition from boosting along the ground to performing boost-enabled jumps, and before you know it, you become a real football superstar as you literally fly across the pitch. Spy Party does the same thing. The game pits a spy and a sniper against each other in a test of deception and deduction. The spy has to complete a number of objectives that involve interacting with the environment, and the sniper has to suss out which of the characters wandering around is controlled by a human before taking the shot. Because the central conceit is so intuitive, and we've seen it a million times before in spy movies, two novice players can still feel like they're engaging in a titanic battle of wits. This is because at the highest and lowest levels of competition, Spy Party is played in basically the same way. All that changes is how deep you've gotten into the metagame of tells, bluffing, and realising that odd job from Goldeneye is just as overpowered here. I could go on, but I think the most important lesson Platinum has to teach us isn't about how games work, but how we can perceive them. A lot of the time, players and developers alike see complex and challenging styles of play to be inherently exclusionary, and that only people good enough at games should be allowed to enjoy them. Platinum have shown us that this doesn't always have to be the case. I had just as much fun playing Metal Gear Rising Badly, trying to go through the story, as I did playing in a manner that could be loosely described as competent while looking for high scores. By designing deep games that can be engaged with on a variety of levels, we can get as many people as possible to have these experiences without compromising the complexity or challenge that makes them enjoyable for more hardcore audiences. Celeste is a great example of a non-platinum game applying this approach. Celeste's core themes of perseverance and self-awareness wouldn't come across if the game wasn't challenging, but it lets people turn the difficulty right down and avoid particularly hard challenges if they need to in order to make sure the game is about triumphing through self-improvement and not grinding your face into a brick wall for hours. On the flip side, the game also facilitates insane stuff like the optional post-game levels or speedrunning for people who've already mastered the game but still want that same feeling of overcoming the odds. Depth isn't always about making sure that competitive players have stuff to master, or that people like me have cool details to make a video about, sometimes the best thing about making a game that's easy to learn but hard to master and can be experienced on many different levels is that more people get to enjoy the big core ideas that make it an experience worth having in the first place. And it's for that reason that Platinum deserve their top spot among action devs. Whilst other studios have a more consistent track record and more creative systems, only Platinum has been able to give each and every player the experience of looking at Bayonetta's bum with the plausible deniability of pretending to punch angels. And at the end of the day, isn't that what video games are all about? Hi friends, and thanks for watching. This video and every other video on the channel was made possible by your generous support on Patreon. Every single dollar you donate that I don't immediately spend on frazzles goes right back into making the show better, so your cash is really appreciated. Someone else who you really should support is Thomas GameDocs, who makes fun, bite-sized videos all about game development topics like his most recent one, which is all about why and how Link became hot. Good stuff. Of course, the real people I should be celebrating are my top-tier Patreon supporters, who are... Alex Deloch, Asaran, 
Alna 94, Baxter Heel, Brian Atariani, Calvin Han, Chill, Daniel Metches, Dirk Jan Karambeld, Evie, Ibathon, Jesse Ryan, Jonathan Christensen, Joshua Binswanger, Lee Berman, Lucas Slack, Lunar Eagle 1996, Mace Window 54, Max Filipov, Patrick Romberg, Philby the Bilby, Phony Homeless, Prospero, Ray's Dad, Sam Myers, Samuel Vanderplatz, Strateger in Ultima, Yaron Mirren, Zach Schuster, and Chow. Thanks to all those people for supporting, thanks to you for watching all the way through, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!